What group of animals was the first to make a partial transition from water to land? Amphibians have made a partial transition to terrestrial life. The living amphibians include newts, salamanders, frogs, and toads. Although lungfish made a partial transition to living out of the water, amphibians were the first to struggle onto land and become adapted to a life of breathing air while not constantly surrounded by water. What group of animals was the first to make a partial transition from water to land? Amphibians have made a partial transition to terrestrial life. The living amphibians include newts, salamanders, frogs, and toads. Although lungfish made a partial transition to living out of the water, amphibians were the first to struggle onto land and become adapted to a life of breathing air while not constantly surrounded by water. What does the word amphibian mean? The word amphibian, from the Greek term amphibia, means both lives and refers to the animal's double life on land and in water. The usual life cycle of amphibians begins with eggs laid in water, which develop into aquatic larvae with external gills, in a development that recapitulates its evolution. The fish-like larva develops lungs and limbs and becomes an adult. What does the word amphibian mean? The word amphibian, from the Greek term amphibia, means both lives and refers to the animal's double life on land and in water. The usual life cycle of amphibians begins with eggs laid in water, which develop into aquatic larvae with external gills, in a development that recapitulates its evolution. The fish-like larva develops lungs and limbs and becomes an adult. What features of reptiles enabled them to become true land vertebrates? Legs were arranged to support the body's weight more effectively than in amphibians. Allowing reptile bodies to be larger and to run. Reptilian lungs were more developed with a greatly increased surface area for gas exchange than the sac-like lungs of amphibians. The three-chambered heart of reptiles was more efficient than the amphibian heart. In addition, the skin was covered with hard, dry scales to minimize water loss. However, the most important evolutionary adaptation was the amniotic egg in which an embryo could survive and develop on land. The eggs were surrounded by a protective shell that prevented the developing embryo from drying out. What features of reptiles enabled them to become true land vertebrates?
legs were arranged to support the body's weight more effectively than in amphibians. Allowing reptile bodies to be larger and to run. Reptilian lungs were more developed with a greatly increased surface area for gas exchange than the sac-like lungs of amphibians. The three-chambered heart of reptiles was more efficient than the amphibian heart. In addition, the skin was covered with hard, dry scales to minimize water loss. However, the most important evolutionary adaptation was the amniotic egg. In which an embryo could survive and develop on land. The eggs were surrounded by a protective shell that prevented the developing embryo from drying out. What is the difference between a reptile and an amphibian? Reptiles are clad in scales, shields, or plates, and their toes have claws. Amphibians have moist, glandular skins, and their toes lack claws. Reptile eggs have a thick, hard, or parchment-like shell that protects the developing embryo from moisture loss, even on dry land. The eggs of amphibians lack this protective outer covering and are always laid in water or in damp places. Young reptiles are miniature replicas of their parents in general appearance if not always in coloration and pattern. Juvenile amphibians pass through a larval, usually aquatic stage before they metamorphose, change in form and structure, into the adult form. Reptiles include alligators, crocodiles, turtles, and snakes. Amphibians include salamanders, toads, and frogs. What is the difference between a reptile and an amphibian? Reptiles are clad in scales, shields, or plates, and their toes have claws. Amphibians have moist, glandular skins, and their toes lack claws. Reptile eggs have a thick, hard, or parchment-like shell that protects the developing embryo from moisture loss, even on dry land. The eggs of amphibians lack this protective outer covering and are always laid in water or in damp places. Young reptiles are miniature replicas of their parents in general appearance if not always in coloration and pattern. Juvenile amphibians pass through a larval, usually aquatic stage before they metamorphose change in form and structure, into the adult form. Reptiles include alligators, crocodiles, turtles, and snakes. Amphibians include salamanders, toads, and frogs. What groups of reptiles are living today? The three orders of reptiles that are alive today are, 1, Chelonia, which includes turtles, terrapins, and tortoises, 2, Squamata, which includes lizards and snakes, and 3, Crocodilia, which includes crocodiles and alligators.
What groups of reptiles are living today? The three orders of reptiles that are alive today are, 1, Chelonia, which includes turtles, terrapins, and tortoises, 2, Squamata, which includes lizards and snakes, and 3, Crocodilia, which includes crocodiles and alligators. When was the term dinosaur first used? The term dinosaur was first used by Richard Owen. 1804 to 1892, in 1841 in his report on British fossil reptiles. The term, meaning fearful lizard, was used to describe the group of large extinct reptiles whose fossil remains had been found by many collectors. When was the term dinosaur first used? The term dinosaur was first used by Richard Owen. 1804 to 1892, in 1841 in his report on British fossil reptiles. The term, meaning fearful lizard, was used to describe the group of large extinct reptiles whose fossil remains had been found by many collectors. What were the smallest and largest dinosaurs? Compsognathus, a carnivore from the late Jurassic period, 131 million years ago. Was about the size of a chicken and measured, at most, 35 in, 89 centimeters, from the tip of its snout to the tip of its tail. The average weight was about 6.8 pounds 3 kilograms, but individuals could be as much as 15 pounds 6.8 kilograms. The largest species for which a whole skeleton is known is Brachiosaurus. A specimen in Humboldt Museum in Berlin measures 72.75 feet 22.2 meters long and 46 feet 14 meters high. It weighed an estimated 34.7 tons, 31,480 kilograms. Brachiosaurus was a four-footed plant-eating dinosaur with a long neck and tail and lived from about 155 to 131 million years ago. What were the smallest and largest dinosaurs? Compsognathus, a carnivore from the late Jurassic period, 131 million years ago. Was about the size of a chicken and measured, at most, 35 in, 89 centimeters, from the tip of its snout to the tip of its tail. The average weight was about 6.8 pounds 3 kilograms, but individuals could be as much as 15 pounds 6.8 kilograms. The largest species for which a whole skeleton is known is Brachiosaurus. A specimen in Humboldt Museum in Berlin measures 72.75 feet 22.2 meters long and 46 feet 14 meters high. It weighed an estimated 34.7 tons, 
31,480 kg. Brachiosaurus was a four-footed plant-eating dinosaur with a long neck and tail and lived from about 155 to 131 million years ago. What is the difference between a reptile and an amphibian? Reptiles are clad in scales, shields, or plates, and their toes have claws. Amphibians have moist, glandular skins, and their toes lack claws. Reptile eggs have a thick, hard, or parchment-like shell that protects the developing embryo from moisture loss, even on dry land. The eggs of amphibians lack this protective outer covering and are always laid in water or in damp places. Young reptiles are miniature replicas of their parents in general appearance if not always in coloration and pattern. Juvenile amphibians pass through a larval, usually aquatic stage before they metamorphose change in form and structure, into the adult form. Reptiles include alligators, crocodiles, turtles, and snakes. Amphibians include salamanders, toads, and frogs. What are the stages of insect metamorphosis? There are two types of metamorphoses. Mark structural changes in the growth processes complete and incomplete. In complete metamorphosis the insect, such as an ant, moth, butterfly, termite, wasp, or beetle, goes through all the distinct stages of growth to reach adulthood. In incomplete metamorphosis the insect, such as a grasshopper, cricket, or louse, does not go through all the stages of complete metamorphoses. Complete metamorphosis. Egg. One egg is laid at a time or many, as much as 10,000. Larva, what hatches from the eggs is called a larva. A larva can look like a worm. Pupa. After reaching its full growth, the larva hibernates. Developing a shell or pupal case for protection. A few insects, example the moth, spin a hard covering called a cocoon. The resting insect is called a pupa, except the butterfly is called a chrysalis and remains in the hibernation state for several weeks or months. Adult, during hibernation, the insect develops its adult body parts. When it has matured physically, the fully grown insect emerges from its case or cocoon. Incomplete metamorphosis. Egg, one egg or many eggs are laid. Early stage nymph, hatched insect resembles an adult but is smaller in size. However, those insects that would normally have wings have not yet developed them. Late stage nymph, at this time the skin begins to mold, shed, and the wings begin to bud. Adult, the insect is now fully grown. What group of animals was the first to make a partial transition from water to land?
amphibians have made a partial transition to terrestrial life. The living amphibians include newts, salamanders, frogs, and toads. Although lungfish made a partial transition to living out of the water, amphibians were the first to struggle onto land and become adapted to a life of breathing air while not constantly surrounded by water. What general characteristics do all fishes have in common? All fishes have the following characteristics, 1, gills that extract oxygen from water, 2, an internal skeleton with a skin that surrounds the dorsal nerve cord, 3, single loop blood circulation in which the blood is pumped from the heart to the gills and then to the rest of the body before returning to the heart, 4, nutritional deficiencies, particularly some amino acids that must be consumed and cannot be synthesized. How does a nematocyst work? A nematocyst is a specialized organelle found in all nadarians. Each nematocyst features a coiled, thread-like tube lined with a series of barbed spines. The nematocyst is used to capture prey and may also be used for defense purposes. When it is triggered to discharge, the extremely high osmotic pressure within the nematocyst 140 atmospheres, causes water to rush into the capsule. Increasing the hydrostatic pressure and expelling the thread with great force. The barb instantly penetrates the prey, stinging it with a highly toxic protein. What are some interesting features of jellyfishes? Jellyfishes live close to the shores of most oceans and spend most of their time floating near the surface. Jellyfishes have bell-shaped bodies that are between 95% and 96% water. They have a muscular ring around the margin of the bell. That contracts rhythmically to propel them through the water. Jellyfishes are carnivores. Subduing their prey with stinging tentacles and drawing the paralyzed animal into the digestive cavity. Jellyfishes are gelatinous you can see through their bodies. Are there any natural predators of gypsy moth caterpillars? About 45 kinds of birds, squirrels, chipmunks, and white-footed mice eat this serious insect pest. Among the 13 imported natural enemies of the moth, two flies Compis luricincinata, a tachnid fly, and Sternius cutellata parasitize the caterpillar. Other parasites and various wasps have also been tried as controls. As well as spraying and male sterilization. What features of reptiles enabled them to become true land vertebrates?
legs were arranged to support the body's weight more effectively than in amphibians. Allowing reptile bodies to be larger and to run. Reptilian lungs were more developed with a greatly increased surface area for gas exchange than the sac-like lungs of amphibians. The three-chambered heart of reptiles was more efficient than the amphibian heart. In addition, the skin was covered with hard, dry scales to minimize water loss. However, the most important evolutionary adaptation was the amniotic egg. In which an embryo could survive and develop on land. The eggs were surrounded by a protective shell that prevented the developing embryo from drying out. Who introduced the gypsy moth into the United States? In 1869 Professor Leopold Trevelyat 1827 to 1895 brought gypsy moth egg masses from France to Medford Massachusetts His intention was to breed the gypsy moth with the silkworm to overcome a wilt disease of the silkworm He placed the egg masses on a window ledge and evidently the wind blew them away about 10 years later these caterpillars were numerous on trees in that vicinity. And in 20 years trees in eastern Massachusetts were being defoliated. In 1911 a contaminated plant shipment from Holland also introduced the gypsy moth to Massachusetts. These pests have now spread to 25 states, especially in the northeastern United States. Scattered locations in Michigan and Oregon have also reported occurrences of gypsy moth infestations. The gypsy moth, Porthetria dispar, lays its eggs on the leaves of oaks. Birches, maples, and other hardwood trees. When the yellow hairy caterpillars hatch from the eggs. They devour the leaves in such quantities that the tree becomes temporarily defoliated. Sometimes this causes the tree to die. The caterpillars grow from 0.5 in, 3 mm, to about 2 in, 5.1 cm. Before they spin a pupa, in which they will metamorphose into adult moths. What are migratory beekeepers? A migratory beekeeper is a person who transports his or her bee colonies to different areas to produce better honey or to collect fees for pollinating such crops as fruit trees, almonds, and alfalfa. The beekeepers frequently travel north in the spring and summer to pollinate crops and then back south in the fall and winter to maintain the colonies in the warmer southern weather. Approximately 1,000 migratory beekeepers operate in the United States. Transporting approximately 2 million bee colonies a year. What is the most destructive insect in the world? The most destructive insect is the desert locust, Schistosera gregaria. The locust of the Bible, whose habitat ranges from the dry and semi-arid 
regions of Africa and the Middle East through Pakistan and northern India. This shorthorn grasshopper can eat its own weight in food a day. And during long migratory flights a large swarm can consume 20,000 tons, 18,144,000 kilograms, of grain and vegetation a day. Are there more marine or freshwater sponges? There are approximately 5,000 species of marine, saltwater, sponges and 150 species of freshwater sponges. What is the most popular state insect? The honeybee is by far the most popular state insect, having been selected by 16 states, Arkansas, California, nicknamed the Beehive State, Georgia, Kansas, Louisiana, Maine, Mississippi, Missouri, Nebraska, New Jersey, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Vermont, and Wisconsin. How is the light in fireflies produced? The light produced by fireflies, fought inus pyroles, or lightning bugs, is a kind of heatless light called bioluminescence. It is caused by a chemical reaction in which the substance luciferin undergoes oxidation when the enzyme luciferase is present. The flash is a photon of visible light that radiates when the oxidating chemicals produce a high energy state, which then reverts back to the normal state. The flashing is controlled by the nervous system and takes place in special cells called photocytes. The nervous system, photocytes, and the tracheal end organs control the flashing rate. The air temperature also seems to be correlated with the flashing rate. The higher the temperature, the shorter the interval between flashes 8 seconds at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. 18.3 degrees Celsius, and 4 seconds at 82 degrees Fahrenheit 27.7 degrees Celsius. Scientists are uncertain as to why this flashing occurs. The rhythmic flashes could be a means of attracting prey or enabling mating fireflies to signal in heliographic codes that differ from one species to another, or they could serve as a warning signal. What accounts for the various colors of sponges? Living sponges may be brightly colored green, blue, yellow, orange, red, or purple or they may be white or drab. The bright colors are due to bacteria or algae that live on or within the sponge. What is the most primitive group of animals? Sponges, phylum porifera, from the Latin terms porus, meaning pore. 
and fera, meaning bearing, represent the most primitive animals. These organisms are aggregates of specialized cells without true tissues or organs. With little differentiation and integration, and with no body symmetry. A sponge's body is perforated by holes that lead to an inner water chamber. Sponges pump water through those pores and expel it through a large opening at the top of the chamber. While water is passing through the body, nutrients are engulfed. Oxygen is absorbed, and waste is eliminated. Sponges are distinctive in possessing coanocytes, special flagellated cells whose beating drives water. Through the body cavity and that characterize them as suspension feeders, also known as filter feeders. How far from shore do shark attacks occur? In a study of 570 shark attacks, it was found that most shark attacks occur near shore. These data are not surprising since most people who enter the water stay close to the shore. What are some beneficial insects? Beneficial insects include bees, wasps, flies, butterflies, moths, and others that pollinate plants. Many fruits and vegetables depend on insect pollinators for the production of seeds. Insects are an important source of food for birds, fishes, and many animals. In some countries such insects as termites, caterpillars, ants, and bees are eaten as food by people. Products derived from insects include honey and beeswax, shellac, and silk. Some predators such as mantises, ladybugs, or lady beetles, and lacewings feed on other harmful insects. Other helpful insects are parasites that live on or in the body of harmful insects. For example, some wasps lay their eggs in caterpillars that damage tomato plants. How much water does an average sponge circulate during a day? A sponge that is 4 in, 10 cm, tall and 0.4 in, 1 cm. In diameter pumps about 23 qts, 22.5 l, of water through its body in one day. To obtain enough food to grow by 3 ounces, 100 g, a sponge must filter about 275 gal, 1000 kg, of seawater. What were the smallest and largest dinosaurs? Compsognathus, a carnivore from the late Jurassic period, 131 million years ago was about the size of a chicken and measured, at most, 35 in, 89 centimeters, from the tip of its snout to the tip of its tail. The average weight was about 6.8 pounds 3 kilograms, but individuals could be as much as 15 pounds 6.8 kilograms. The largest species for which a whole skeleton is known is Brachiosaurus.
A specimen in Humboldt Museum in Berlin measures 72.75 feet 22.2 meters long and 46 feet 14 meters high. It weighed an estimated 34.7 tons, 31,480 kilograms. Brachiosaurus was a four-footed plant-eating dinosaur with a long neck and tail and lived from about 155 to 131 million years ago. What groups of reptiles are living today? The three orders of reptiles that are alive today are, 1, Chelonia, which includes turtles, terrapins, and tortoises, 2, Squamata, which includes lizards and snakes, and 3, Crocodilia, which includes crocodiles and alligators. What are killer bees? Africanized honeybees the term entomologists prefer rather than killer bees are a hybrid originating in Brazil. Where African honeybees were imported in 1956. The breeders hoping to produce a bee better suited to producing more honey in the tropics. Instead found that African bees soon hybridized with and mostly displaced the familiar European honey bees. Although they produce more honey, Africanized honey bees, Apis mellifer scutellata, also are more dangerous than European bees because they attack intruders in greater numbers. Since their introduction they have been responsible for approximately 1,000 human deaths. In addition to such safety issues, concern is growing regarding the effect of possible hybridization on the U.S. beekeeping industry. In October 1990 the bees crossed the Mexican border into the United States. They reached Arizona in 1993. In 1996, six years after their arrival in the United States, Africanized honeybees could be found in parts of Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, and California. Their migration northward has slowed. Partially because they are a tropical insect and cannot live in colder climates. Experts have suggested two possible ways of limiting the spread of the Africanized honeybees. The first is drone flooding, a process by which large numbers of European drones are kept in areas where commercially reared European queen bees mate, thereby ensuring that only limited mating occurs between Africanized drones and European queens. The second method is frequent requeening, in which a beekeeper replaces a colony's queen with one of his or her own choosing. The beekeeper can then be assured that the queens are European and that they have already mated with European drones. What does the word amphibian mean? The word amphibian, from the Greek term amphibia, means both lives and refers to the animal's double life on land and in water. The usual life cycle of amphibians begins with eggs laid in water which develop into aquatic larvae with external gills, 
in a development that recapitulates its evolution. The fish-like larva develops lungs and limbs and becomes an adult. How many flowers need to be tapped for bees to gather enough nectar to produce one pound of honey? Bees must gather 4 pounds 18 kilograms of nectar, which requires the bees to tap about 2 million flowers. In order to produce 1 pound, 454 g, of honey. The honey is gathered by worker bees, whose lifespan is 3 to 6 weeks. Long enough to collect about a teaspoon of nectar. How many kinds of sharks are there and how many are dangerous? The United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization lists 354 species of sharks. Ranging in length from 6 in, 15 centimeters, to 49 feet 15 meters. While 35 species are known to have attacked humans at least once. Only a dozen do so on a regular basis. The relatively rare great white shark, Carcharodon carcharias, is the largest predatory fish. The largest specimen accurately measured was 20 feet, 4 in, 6.2 m, long and weighed 5,000 pounds 2,270 kilograms. What members of Nadaria are economically important? Reef building corals are among the most important members of Nadaria. Coral reefs are among the most productive of all ecosystems. They are large formations of calcium carbonate. Limestone in tropical seas laid down by living organisms over thousands of years. Fishes and other animals associated with reefs provide an important source of food for humans. And reefs serve as tourist attractions. Many terrestrial organisms also benefit from coral reefs which form and maintain the foundation of thousands of islands. By providing a barrier against waves, reefs also protect shorelines against storms and erosion. What animals are members of the phylum Nadaria? Corals, jellyfishes, sea anemones, and hydras are members of the phylum Nadaria. The name Nadaria, from the Greek term nide, meaning nettle, and Latin term aria, meaning like or connected with, refers to the stinging structures that are characteristic of some of these animals. These organisms have a digestive cavity with only one opening to the outside. This opening is surrounded by a ring of tentacles used to capture food and defend against predators. Cells in the tentacles and outer body surface contain stinging, harpoon-like structures called nematocysts. Nadarians are the first group in the animal hierarchy to have their cells organized into tissues. What are chondric thighs?
Chondrichthyes are fishes that have a cartilaginous skeleton rather than a bony skeleton. They include such organisms as sharks, skates, and rays. What is the basic composition of a sponge? A sponge is supported by a skeleton made of hard crystals called spicules whose shape and composition are important features in taxonomy. Calcareous sponges have spicules of calcium carbonates, the material of marble and limestone. The silica spicules of the hexactinellid, or glass, sponges are formed into a delicate, glassy network. Demo sponges have siliceous spicules and a network of fibrous protein, spunger, that is similar to collagen. The demo sponges are the source of natural household sponges, which are made by soaking dead sponges. In shallow water until all the cellular material has decayed, leaving the spongin network behind. However, most sponges sold now for household use are plastic and have nothing to do with real sponges. Do termites have any natural predators? Birds, ants, spiders, lizards, and dragonflies have been seen preying on young. Wing termites when they emerge and fly from a home colony to establish new colonies. Termites are generally most vulnerable to predators when they emerge from their home colony. Chimpanzees are also known to use sticks as tools to forage for termites. When was the term dinosaur first used? The term dinosaur was first used by Richard Owen. 1804 to 1892, in 1841 in his report on British fossil reptiles. The term, meaning fearful lizard, was used to describe the group of large extinct reptiles whose fossil remains had been found by many collectors. What is the largest jellyfish? The largest jellyfish is the genus Cyania capillata. It may be more than 6.5 feet 2 meters in diameter and have tentacles of 98 feet. 30 m, long and is among the largest invertebrates. Which fishes form symbiotic relationships with the Portuguese man of war? The Portuguese man of war, Physical Alia Physical Alice, a member of the phylum Nidaria, is a floating hydrozoan. It is a colony of four types of polyps a pneumatophore, or float, dactylozooids or tentacles, gastrozooids, or feeding zooids, and gonozooids, which produce gametes. A number of species of fishes from several genera form symbiotic relationships with the Portuguese men of war. Including the genus Nomus, a minnow-like fish. 
the clownfish, also called the man of war fish, and the yellowjack. Most of these fishes live within the tentacles of the Portuguese man of war. Some of these fishes, in particular the clownfish, produce a slimy mucus that causes the man of war not to fire its nematocysts. The nomus fish do not produce this protective slimy mucus but instead rely on a specialized swimming pattern they swim near the surface in a large circular pattern. In both clockwise and counterclockwise directions to avoid the man of war stings. Why are insects often found in amber? People have long been infatuated with amber, the fossilized form of ancient tree resin. A semi-precious stone used for jewelry and mosaics. Amber from the Dominican Republic contains an average of one insect in every hundred pieces. Some pieces of amber contain thousands of insects both whole insects and insect fragments. These insects were probably crawling or lodged on the outside of a tree. About 30 million years ago and became trapped by a glob of sticky tree resin which continued to ooze around the animal matter and eventually fossilized. Scientists are able to study these insects. Many of which are extinct but may turn out to be missing links to modern day species. What are the two distinct body forms of Nadarians? The two forms are called the polyp stage and the medusa, plural, medusae, or jellyfish, stage. Polyps generally live attached to a hard surface and bud to produce more polyps and in some nadarians, to produce the medusa stage of the life cycle. These medusae, or jellyfish, drift with the ocean currents or swim by pulsating their umbrella-shaped bodies. Medusae release sperm and eggs into the water, where external fertilization occurs. After fertilization, the embryo develops into a larva that eventually settles to the bottom to become another polyp, thus completing the life cycle. Not all nadarians go through both polyp and medusa stages. Some, such as corals and sea anemones, exist only as polyps. What is unusual about the teeth of sharks? Sharks were among the first vertebrates to develop teeth. The teeth are not set into the jaw but rather sit atop it. They are not firmly anchored and are easily lost. The teeth are arranged in 6 to 20 rows. With the ones in front doing the biting and cutting. Behind these teeth. Others grow. When a tooth breaks or is worn down, a replacement moves forward. One shark may eventually develop and use more than 20,000 teeth in a lifetime. What was the typical lifespan of dinosaurs?
the lifespan has been estimated at 75 to 300 years. Such estimates are educated guesses. From examination of the microstructure of dinosaur bones. Scientists have inferred that dinosaurs matured slowly and probably had proportionately long lifespans. What was the typical lifespan of dinosaurs? The lifespan has been estimated at 75 to 300 years. Such estimates are educated guesses. From examination of the microstructure of dinosaur bones. Scientists have inferred that dinosaurs matured slowly and probably had proportionately long lifespans. Did dinosaurs and humans ever coexist? No. Dinosaurs first appeared in the Triassic period, about 220 million years ago. And disappeared at the end of the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. Modern humans, Homo sapiens, appeared only about 25,000 years ago. Movies that show humans and dinosaurs existing together are only Hollywood fantasies. Did dinosaurs and humans ever coexist? No. Dinosaurs first appeared in the Triassic period, about 220 million years ago. And disappeared at the end of the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. Modern humans, Homo sapiens, appeared only about 25,000 years ago. Movies that show humans and dinosaurs existing together are only Hollywood fantasies. Why did dinosaurs become extinct? There are many theories as to why dinosaurs disappeared from Earth about 65 million years ago. Scientists debate whether dinosaurs became extinct gradually or all at once. The gradualists believe that the dinosaur population steadily declined at the end of the Cretaceous period. Numerous reasons have been proposed for this. Some claim the dinosaurs' extinction was caused by biological changes that made them less competitive with other organisms. Especially the mammals that were just beginning to appear. Overpopulation has been argued, as has the theory that mammals ate so. Many dinosaur eggs that dinosaur reproduction was irrevocably harmed. Others believe that disease everything from rickets to constipation wiped the dinosaurs out. Changes in climate, continental drift, volcanic eruptions, and shifts in Earth's axis. Orbit, and slash or magnetic field have also been held responsible. The catastrophists argue that a single disastrous event caused the extinction not only 
of the dinosaurs but also of a large number of other species that coexisted with them. In 1980 the American physicist Luis Alvarez, 1911-1988, and his geologist son Walter Alvarez, 1940, proposed that a large comet or meteoroid struck Earth 65 million years ago. They pointed out that there is a high concentration of the element iridium. In the sediments at the boundary between the Cretaceous and Tertiary periods. Iridium is rare on Earth, so the only source of such a large amount of it had to be outer space. This iridium anomaly has since been discovered at over 50 sites around the world. In 1990, tiny glass fragments, which could have been caused by the extreme heat of an impact, were identified in Haiti. A 110 miles 177 kilometers wide crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, long covered by sediments, has been dated to 64.98 million years ago, making it a leading candidate for the site of this impact. A hit by a large extraterrestrial object, perhaps as much as 6 miles 9.3 kilometers wide, would have had a catastrophic effect upon the world's climate. Huge amounts of dust and debris would have been thrown into the atmosphere, reducing the amount of sunlight reaching the surface. Heat from the blast may also have caused large forest fires, which would have added smoke and ash to the air. Lack of sunlight would kill off plants and have a domino-like effect. On other organisms in the food chain, including the dinosaurs. It is possible that the reason for the dinosaurs' extinction may have been a combination of both theories. The dinosaurs may have been gradually declining, for whatever reason. The impact of a large object from space merely delivered the coup de grace. The fact that dinosaurs became extinct has been cited as proof of their inferiority and that they were evolutionary failures. However, these animals flourished for 150 million years. By comparison, the earliest ancestors of humanity appeared only about 3 million years ago. Humans have a long way to go before they can claim the same sort of success as the dinosaurs. Why did dinosaurs become extinct? There are many theories as to why dinosaurs disappeared from Earth about 65 million years ago. Scientists debate whether dinosaurs became extinct gradually or all at once. The gradualists believe that the dinosaur population steadily declined at the end of the Cretaceous period. Numerous reasons have been proposed for this. Some claim the dinosaurs' extinction was caused by biological changes that made them less competitive with other organisms. Especially the mammals that were just beginning to appear. Overpopulation has been argued, as has the theory that mammals ate so. Many dinosaur eggs that dinosaur reproduction was irrevocably harmed. Others believe that disease everything from rickets to constipation wiped the dinosaurs out. Changes in climate, continental drift, volcanic eruptions, and shifts in Earth's axis, orbit, and slash or magnetic field have also been held responsible. 
the catastrophists argue that a single disastrous event caused the extinction not only of the dinosaurs but also of a large number of other species that coexisted with them. In 1980 the American physicist Luis Alvarez, 1911-1988, and his geologist son Walter Alvarez, 1940, proposed that a large comet or meteoroid struck Earth 65 million years ago. They pointed out that there is a high concentration of the element iridium in the sediments at the boundary between the Cretaceous and Tertiary periods. Iridium is rare on Earth, so the only source of such a large amount of it had to be outer space. This iridium anomaly has since been discovered at over 50 sites around the world. In 1990 tiny glass fragments, which could have been caused by the extreme heat of an impact, were identified in Haiti. A 110 miles 177 kilometers wide crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, long covered by sediments, has been dated to 64.98 million years ago, making it a leading candidate for the site of this impact. A hit by a large extraterrestrial object, perhaps as much as 6 miles 9.3 kilometers wide, would have had a catastrophic effect upon the world's climate. Huge amounts of dust and debris would have been thrown into the atmosphere. Reducing the amount of sunlight reaching the surface. Heat from the blast may also have caused large forest fires. Which would have added smoke and ash to the air. Lack of sunlight would kill off plants and have a domino-like effect. On other organisms in the food chain, including the dinosaurs. It is possible that the reason for the dinosaur's extinction may have been a combination of both theories. The dinosaurs may have been gradually declining, for whatever reason. The impact of a large object from space merely delivered the coup de grace. The fact that dinosaurs became extinct has been cited as proof of their inferiority and that they were evolutionary failures. However, these animals flourished for 150 million years. By comparison, the earliest ancestors of humanity appeared only about 3 million years ago. Humans have a long way to go before they can claim the same sort of success as the dinosaurs. Are tortoises and terrapins the same as turtles? The terms turtle, tortoise, and terrapin are used for various members of the order Testudinas. From the Latin term testudo, meaning tortoise. In North American usage they are all correctly called turtles. The term tortoise is often used for land turtles. In British usage the term tortoise is the inclusive term. And turtle is only applied to aquatic members of the order. Are tortoises and terrapins the same as turtles? The terms turtle, tortoise, and terrapin are used for various members of the order Testudinas. From the Latin term testudo, meaning tortoise. 
In North American usage they are all correctly called turtles. The term tortoise is often used for land turtles. In British usage the term tortoise is the inclusive term. And turtle is only applied to aquatic members of the order. Are turtles endangered? Worldwide turtle populations have declined due to several reasons. Including habitat destruction, exploitation of species by humans for their eggs, leather, and meat and they're becoming accidentally caught in the nets of fishermen. In particular danger are sea turtles, such as Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. Lepidoshellus kempii, which is believed to have a population of only a few hundred. Other threatened species include the Central American river turtle, Dermatemis maywii. The green sea turtle, Chelonia mitas, the leatherback sea turtle, Geochelone inifora, the desert tortoise, Gophera sagacezii, and the Galapagos tortoise, Geochelone elephantopus. Source, U.S. Are turtles endangered? Worldwide turtle populations have declined due to several reasons. Including habitat destruction, exploitation of species by humans for their eggs, leather, and meat, and they're becoming accidentally caught in the nets of fishermen. In particular danger are sea turtles, such as Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. Lepidoshellus kempii, which is believed to have a population of only a few hundred. Other threatened species include the Central American river turtle, Dermatemis maywii. The green sea turtle, Chelonia mitas, the leatherback sea turtle, Geochelone inifora, the desert tortoise. Gophera sagacezii, and the Galapagos tortoise. Geochelone elephant opus. Source, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service What is the most successful and diverse group of terrestrial vertebrates? Birds members of the class Aves, are the most successful of all terrestrial vertebrates. There are 28 orders of living birds with almost 10. 000 species distributed over almost the entire Earth. The success of birds is basically due to the development of the feather. Fish and Wildlife Service What is the most successful and diverse group of terrestrial vertebrates? Birds, members of the class Aves, are the most successful of all terrestrial vertebrates. There are 28 orders of living birds with almost 10. 000 species distributed over almost the entire Earth. The success of birds is basically due to the development of the feather.
What accounts for the different colors of bird feathers? The vivid color of feathers is of two kinds, one, pigmentary, and two, structural. Red, orange and yellow feathers are colored by pigments called lipochromes deposited in the feather barbules as they are formed. Black, brown, and gray colors are from another pigment, melanin. Blue feathers depend not on pigment but on scattering of shorter wavelengths of light by particles within the feather. These are structural feathers. Green colors are almost always a combination of yellow pigment and blue feather structure. Another kind of structural color is the beautiful iridescent color of many birds which ranges from red, orange, copper, and gold to green, blue, and violet. Iridescent color is based on interference that causes light waves to reinforce, weaken, or eliminate each other. Iridescent colors may change with the angle of view. What accounts for the different colors of bird feathers? The vivid color of feathers is of two kinds, one, pigmentary, and two, structural. Red, orange and yellow feathers are colored by pigments called Lipochromes deposited in the feather barbules as they are formed. Black, brown, and gray colors are from another pigment, melanin. Blue feathers depend not on pigment but on scattering of shorter wavelengths of light by particles within the feather. These are structural feathers. Green colors are almost always a combination of yellow pigment and blue feather structure. Another kind of structural color is the beautiful iridescent color of many birds, which ranges from red, orange, copper, and gold to green, blue, and violet. Iridescent color is based on interference that causes light waves to reinforce weaken, or eliminate each other. Iridescent colors may change with the angle of view. How are birds related to dinosaurs? Birds are essentially modified dinosaurs with feathers. Robert T. Backer, 1945, and John H. Ostrom, 1928. Did extensive research on the relationship between birds and dinosaurs in the 1970s and concluded that the bony structure of small dinosaurs was very similar to Archaeopteryx. The first animal classified as a bird, but that dinosaur fossils showed no evidence of feathers. They proposed that birds and dinosaurs evolved from the same source. How are birds related to dinosaurs? Birds are essentially modified dinosaurs with feathers. Robert T. Backer, 1945, and John H. Ostrom, 1928.
did extensive research on the relationship between birds and dinosaurs in the 1970s and concluded that the bony structure of small dinosaurs was very similar to Archaeopteryx. The first animal classified as a bird, but that dinosaur fossils showed no evidence of feathers. They proposed that birds and dinosaurs evolved from the same source. Why is Archaeopteryx important? Archaeopteryx is the first known bird. It had true feathers that provided insulation and allowed this animal to form scoops with its wings for catching prey. Why is Archaeopteryx important? Archaeopteryx is the first known bird. It had true feathers that provided insulation and allowed this animal to form scoops with its wings for catching prey. What bird has the biggest wingspan? Three members of the albatross family, the wandering albatross, Diomede exculens, the royal albatross, Diomede epomophora, and the Amsterdam island albatross, Diomeda amsterdiamensis, have the greatest wingspan of any bird species with a spread of 8 to 11 feet, 2.5 to 3.3 m. What bird has the biggest wingspan? Three members of the albatross family, the wandering albatross, Diomede exculens, the royal albatross, Diomede epomophora, and the Amsterdam island albatross, Diomeda amsterdiamensis have the greatest wingspan of any bird species with a spread of 8 to 11 feet, 2.5 to 3.3 m. When was the bald eagle adopted as the national bird of the United States? On June 20, 1782, the citizens of the newly independent United States of America adopted the bald or American eagle as their national emblem. At first the heraldic 268 artists depicted a bird that could have been a member of any of the larger species. But by 1902 the bird portrayed on the seal of the United States of America had assumed its proper white plumage on head and tail. The choice of the bald eagle was not unanimous, Benjamin Franklin, 1706 to 1790, preferred the wild turkey. Oftentimes a tongue-in-cheek humorist, Franklin thought the turkey a wily but brave, intelligent, and prudent bird. He viewed the eagle on the other hand as having a bad moral character and not getting his living honestly. Preferring instead to steal fish from hard-working fish hawks. He also found the eagle a coward who readily flees from the irritating attacks of the much smaller king bird.
When was the bald eagle adopted as the national bird of the United States? On June 20, 1782, the citizens of the newly independent United States of America adopted the bald or American eagle as their national emblem. At first the heraldic 268 artists depicted a bird that could have been a member of any of the larger species. But by 1902 the bird portrayed on the seal of the United States of America had assumed its proper white plumage on head and tail. The choice of the bald eagle was not unanimous, Benjamin Franklin, 1706 to 1790, preferred the wild turkey. Oftentimes a tongue-in-cheek humorist, Franklin thought the turkey a wily but brave, intelligent and prudent bird. He viewed the eagle on the other hand as having a bad moral character and not getting his living honestly. Preferring instead to steal fish from hard-working fish hawks. He also found the eagle a coward who readily flees from the irritating attacks of the much smaller king bird. <laughs>